Hello, welcome once again to Leto's Law. I'm Steve Leto. I think it's time we admit it. It's time to say goodbye, mortar brick stores. <laughs> it's sad. It's sad, but true. The time has come and, you know, something they've been uh, talking about the demise of, of, of the actual physical stores, the retail locations out there due to the rise of e-commerce. And of course, they've been predicting this demise since the internet came around. And there was a time when people said, well, there's some things you can't buy off the internet. And of course, now we've got people buying cars off the internet. Uh, and so really, though, the point I'm trying to make here is this, is that the brick and mortar stores aren't doing themselves any favors. And it's mind boggling to me. I did a video not too long ago called Why Won't You Take My Money? And I was talking about the experiences I'd had recently trying to buy things in stores with money. I'd walk in with cash and I wanted to buy things and I couldn't do it. I couldn't, you know. So I, I went into a Honda dealer and tried to buy a boat motor. And the guy had one on display and he wouldn't sell it to me. And he, he wouldn't tell me why. He just wouldn't sell it to me. Um, I tried to buy a canoe from the only dealer in Michigan who carries the canoes I needed to buy. And the guy wouldn't call me back. I contacted, tried several times. Couldn't get a hold of him. And talk to the company. They said, well, there's only one dealer in Michigan. That's them. And uh, I don't know what's going on there. So uh, the reason I'm talking about this just now is I had a recent experience that reinforced this for me. And I got a Peloton bicycle. That is an indoor stationary bicycle that you get on and you ride in place with a screen. And you ride along with other people and you watch instructors uh, in, in studios you can follow live classes or you can simply uh, watch pre-recorded classes. And I did a bunch of research. There's a bunch of companies make these things. And I've had other indoor exercise equipment. I've used uh, Nordic tracks in the past. I've used Bowflexes in the past. Right now, I own a water rower. And I used a water rower last winter. And that's the hard part for me is to stay in shape during the winter time. Okay, So I run and bike all summer long. The second it gets cold out, I stop biking. And um, uh, shortly after, thereafter, I start. I, I stop running too. <laughs> I hate running in cold weather, and I hate running in the snow. And where I bike, you can't bike in the winter time for the most part. So that's out. So the trick is, what can you do in the winter time to stay in shape? So I got a water rower years ago, and I've used that many, many times. But the problem with the water rowers is kind of mind-numbingly boring. You're just sitting there doing this motion over and over again, and you can put it in front of the TV and watch TV. But then the question is, what can you watch? If you're watching something with commercials, you got to take your hand off the handle and zap the commercials. So it's 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 just not ideal. And by the way, it's not as good of a workout as like going out and running is. So I did the research. Someone suggested to me that I look at the Peloton. I looked at it and I thought, yeah, that looks interesting. There is a Peloton showroom in Michigan. By the way, this is not an advertisement. I'm not being paid by them. This is just something I'm talking about because it's 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 real. And I went into the store. I met with a very nice salesperson. Uh, I sat on the bike, rode it for a little while, saw the whole demonstration, said, boom, I want one. Had it delivered two days later. Uh, and uh, since I got it, I've used it every single day. So if you're in the audience and you have a Peloton, you can um, watch for my uh, screen name. It's pretty obvious it's me, but I also do use the symbol off my show. So it's, it's the logo off my show is my icon. Um, but here's the deal. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time on this bike. I've determined that because I've now ridden, like I said, every single day I've owned it. Haven't missed a day yet. Don't plan on missing a day till next year. And so I have this thing and, and I have a lot of biking, uh, excuse me, I have a lot of running tights, running shorts, running tights, things that I run in. And running shorts and running things don't have padding where you'd like to have padding. You spend a lot of time in a saddle, uh, referring to a bicycle saddle. And so I thought, well, I should get some bike tights. In the past, when I've done a lot of mountain biking off-road, you know, in on, on trails and so on, I've often had padded biking shorts, okay? So I thought, well, I should get some padded men's biking shorts. How hard can this be? So here's the deal. There is a bike shop near me. Now, here's the thing. A couple of years ago, I moved. And near where I used to live, I wanted to buy a mountain bike. I didn't have a mountain bike at the time that I liked. The one I had a little outdated. I decided I need to get a new mountain bike. Did some research, and of course, I have to have a Haro mountain bike. I'm going to throw brand names at you today because these are brands I love. H-A-R-O, Haro. And Haro makes very, very good, sturdy mountain bikes for a husky biker like me. And 
I found that there was a Haro dealer about 30 or 40 miles from where I lived. It was a good hike away, but but small independent bike shop. I called, got the owner on the phone. The guy goes, no, dude, I'll take care of you. Get down here. Boom. So I drove down there. The guy showed me his full array of bikes. And we determined that the one I wanted, he didn't have in stock. But he goes, I've got the other Haros that are similar to it. You can try this up. Make sure you get the right size. He goes, and I can order it for you. It'll be here. I believe it was the next day. But it may have been two days. Uh, I believe Haro had a warehouse someplace in the Midwest that, that they could deliver from pretty quickly. So anyways... After dealing with this guy, he goes, yeah, we well, you know what model you want, what size you want, what color you want. It'll be here tomorrow. I came back the next day. Boom, there it was. Beautiful bike. So I buy the bike, throw the money down. Now you say, Steve, there's a guy, a brick and mortar store who's, who's, who's surviving, right? Well, he's the exception. It's so hard to find people like that because, and this is the deal, a lot of stores have just given up on the service. And they think, well, you know, I, I don't know what they think. Because that was an unusual situation. Because around the same time I bought the bike from him, I couldn't buy the boat motor. I couldn't buy the canoe. I, there's all kinds of things I couldn't buy. They wanted us buying on, online. Now, I, I was leery of buying a mountain bike online. I don't even know if you can buy Haro mountain bikes online. So it might be something you, you're forced to go to a store to buy. I don't know. But the point is that of things where you can compete, you can buy it online or buy it in a store. The store's got to give good service to make up for the fact that their overhead's higher. And they're going to charge more money. I don't mind paying more money if I get good service. Because I don't get any service when I shop online. I'll be the first to tell you that the trade-off when you shop at Amazon is you don't have a person answering questions for you. You, you read the description under the product and hope that these questions and answers are correct. But you get a really good price and you can return it if it doesn't work. There's things you can do. But, but the point is, if I want something today, and you say, Steve, there's a store down the street that sells, it's going to cost a couple bucks more, but you can get it there, I'll go there. I'll support them if I can. But here's what happened. So I decided I need some men's biking shorts, okay? I've got a couple pairs, but I need more because I'm riding every single day, as I pointed out earlier in this discussion. There's a bright, shiny new bike store near where I live, about three miles away, four miles away. And it's not where I bought my mountain bike, but I've driven by it many times. Brand new, big building, big parking lot. It's actually larger than I would expect for where I live, but it's a big old bike, bike shop. They sell road bikes, mountain bikes, all that stuff. So I'm thinking to myself, I need several pairs of biking shorts, several pairs. I'm, I'd, I'd like to buy five or six pairs because I'm going to be riding seven days a week, if my math is correct. So I am driving by there the other day and I go, hey. Let's go in. Got some time. Got my wallet. Let's go in. I walk into the store. It's a weekday, about one o'clock in the afternoon. The store is dead. I am the only civilian in the store. There's a teenage kid behind the counter. Can't be, I mean, he can't be under school age because he's he's obviously working and it's, it's a school day. But you know, 18, 19 year old kid. And he looks up and he goes, Can I help you? And I go, Yeah, uh, bike shorts. He goes, eh, over there. And he looks back down and he's, and he's I don't know if he's playing with a smartphone, playing video games, but but I'm the only person in the store other than him. But he's going to guard the register because that apparently is a big issue. So I walk over to the rack that has the men's biking shorts on it. There's two racks. There's two racks. And I walk up the first rack and I see a pair of bike shorts. And in case you don't know this, Bike shorts are bike shorts are bike shorts, okay? They're made out of some synthetic material. It's probably a you know petroleum byproduct derivative. They're made in China, I'm sure. They weigh a fraction of an ounce. They probably cost a fraction of a penny to make a pair. And then they cost about a penny to ship over here in a container ship. And by the time they hit the, the shelves, they've been marked up 17 times over. But the point is that we're not talking about something that's made out of a precious metal or by highly skilled tradespeople who only exist in small pockets around the world, okay? There's a there's a company someplace with a machine spitting these things out like envelopes going through a sorter at the U.S. post office, okay? I walk over to the rack. I see a couple pairs of bike shorts. I see one in my size. I turn the price tag over. $100. <laughs> $100 for a, bear, a pair of bike shorts. Now, my first thought is, okay, wait a second. 
you may have just hit the the expensive section of the bike shorts. You may have just actually actually accidentally hit the formal bike shorts. Perhaps these are the bike shorts you wear to a destination bike wedding. Okay, maybe these are the bike shorts you wear to bike church. I I I don't know. The hundred dollar. Because I'm looking at them, going, they look just like the pair I used to have that I wore out. That didn't cost me a hundred bucks. Oh, but then I go, wait a second. There's two shelves. Maybe these are the expensive ones, and the ones for the El Cheapo people are over here. I'll go look at the other shelf. I walk over to the other shelf, turn the tag over. One hundred and twenty-five dollars a pair. <laughs> I actually thought, okay, there's got to be a camera around here somewhere. This is like a TV show or something. I haven't been asked to sign a release yet, though, but it's got to be a TV show, something. I don't know. Alan Funt's going to jump out and say, hey, you're on candid camera. Uh, punked. I don't know. But so, some, something's going on here because no one in their right mind actually expects to pay $125 for a pair of just generic men's biking shorts. And I look, and sure enough, every single pair, 125 125 125 $125 for a single pair of men's biking shorts. Like I said, made out of some... These aren't made out of space-age material. These things aren't bulletproof. These things are literally just some kind of polyester, lycra, spandex material that they can literally make a ton of for like three cents. And the labor... The thing that's most labor intensive on these is probably somebody with tiny hands got to turn them inside out and sew in a, 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 a tag or something. Okay, but they, they probably automated that also. So it's probably somebody somewhere in a factory in China guarding a machine and watching it as it spits out pairs of bike tights at like, you know, 75 a minute or something. And then if the machine jams, they've got to climb inside of it and clear the jam. And that's the dangerous part of the job. $125. <laughs> now, I, I'm looking over, and the kid is over there playing on his on his smartphone. He doesn't want to help me. And I was toying with the idea of saying, excuse me, sir, are you serious? And I realized, well, it's not his shop. He just works here, barely. But he does technically work there. And he's not the owner of the shop. The owner of the shop is you know, probably on vacation or something, hoping he sells more $125 bike shorts to pay for the vacation. Now, the shop is filled with expensive bikes. And here's what I think is actually happening there. The, the bikes cost thousands of dollars a piece. Okay, In case you don't know, modern mountain bikes and road bikes can cost thousands of dollars a piece. The mountain bike I ride right now has uh, it's got you know, hydraulic disc brakes. I'm not kidding you. Um, so the, the idea they cost a lot makes sense. A lot of technology goes into them. It's a full suspension mountain bike. I'll put up a picture. But... Um, $125 for a pair of biking tights? And I think what's going on is I'm thinking that the sales concept is if someone comes in here and is actually going to drop a few thousand dollars on a bike, and they say, oh, by the way, you've got bike shorts, bike tights. They go, yeah, sure, we'll toss a couple pairs of those in for you too. And when you toss in a couple hundred dollar pairs of bike tights or shorts on top of a multi-thousand dollar purchase, maybe people don't notice that. Maybe they don't. I don't know. When I'm shopping and, and I'm buying a big ticket item and try loading me with the extras, I usually recognize that the extras are where their profit margin is coming from. I mean, it's true with cars, right? And so when somebody says, oh, you want to buy the car, do you want the true coat? You got to ask yourself, well, you know, is it worth it? And most likely it's not. So if you're going to buy a two or $3,000 bicycle and somebody goes, oh, do you want to buy the $125 bike tights? It might seem at the time that makes sense, but it doesn't. It only makes sense in the in the idea that you compare the two thousand dollar purchase price to a hundred dollar thing over here. It seems awfully small, but take the bike out of the picture and you realize a hundred bucks is a hundred bucks is a hundred bucks. So thinking I may have completely lost my mind. Perhaps I don't understand any of this anymore. Perhaps the world we're living in has gone beyond me, and I've been left behind in an old golden era where. You used to be able to buy a pair of bike shorts for less than 100 bucks. I mean, maybe I'm a dinosaur. I don't know. <laughs> I go home, fire up the old computator, and jump on Amazon, type in men's biking shorts, and up pops 100 different 
things that are identical to what I just saw at the bike shop. 25 bucks, free shipping, 25 bucks. Now you might say, Steve, maybe those are lousy shorts. Maybe those are less quality shorts or made out of a cheaper material. Now I got them right here. They're perfect. They're the same thing I saw at the store. Identical. <laughs> Actually, it's a better color, better choice of colors on the internet. <laughs> so just so we can do the algebra on this, I could have spent $125 at the bike shop and bought one pair of shorts. But instead, I came home, I ordered one pair to see what size I would want to wear, and it turns out I was right. The correct size came to me. And to make sure these are the same shorts, which they are. So I can now go back online and order four more pairs. So that when I'm done, I'll have five, five, one, two, three, four, five pairs of bike shorts for the price of one at the local brick and mortar. Now, some contrarians in the audience are going, but Steve, that's the whole point. The brick and mortar store buys those tights for 12 bucks and marks them up to 125 so they make $113 profit to help keep the overhead overhead. And Amazon has got no such overhead, although they do, but not quite the same overhead. And therefore, they can buy them for $12, or well, they get them a discount probably for 8 and sell them for 25 and triple their money. And that's what's going on here. But I'll support the local brick-and-mortar store and pay a little bit extra. Okay, I'll pay a little extra. I don't mind paying a little extra for the personal interaction with a salesperson or to realize the value that comes from having a local store I can walk into and get help. You know, the guy at the bike shop said, you know, to get the perfect bike for you, we have to order it. You'll have it tomorrow. Can't get it today. So, but the point is, I was relying on his expertise. But to suggest that I will pay five times the price for something to buy it locally versus getting it delivered from Amazon for free <laughs> is insanity. It's insanity. And so if that's the business model that we've come to now, where brick and mortar is going to charge us five times the price for something we can buy off the internet, um, the brick and mortar stores are going to go goodbye. They are. They are. Now, I understand that mathematical model I just described to you is not going to happen all the time the exact same way. It's not always going to be five to one. But this, I think, is a great example of the kind of stuff you do run into. So, again, these bike tights, biking shorts, they are just as good as the ones I saw at the store. But they cost one-fifth the price. And by the way, once I knew these fit, and once I knew that I liked them, I tried them on and all that, I went back to Amazon and go, give me one of each color. Boom, 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 boom. Bought four more. Five pairs, you know. And I don't know they had all five colors at the store. They probably didn't. You know, so it's, it's, it's kind of hard to compete with that. But remember, you're not competing just on price. You can't beat Amazon on price. What you can do, however, is you can beat them on service. So what you do is you tell the 19-year-old kid behind the counter who's mesmerized by his video game, I'm not paying you to play Fortnite. I'm paying you to interact with a customer to convince him to spend $125 <laughs> A $25 pair of tights. That's your job. <laughs> okay. But guess what? If brick and mortar goes away, that kid's job goes away too. But apparently he hasn't figured that out yet. Because like I said, last I saw of him, he was playing Fortnite and didn't even say goodbye to me as I walked by him out the door. So there you go. I do believe it's goodbye mortar brick stores. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later.